Hello Legacy students, so today we're going to look at polynomial division, we're going to look at both ways today, um, long division and synthetic division. Um, you're going to want your pen or pencil, notes, those two foldables I gave you in class, and then also just a thinking brain today. So first one you're going to want to fold, it's say long division on the front with polynomial on there, you're going to want to make a booklet, fold it in half. And inside should say this, so make sure the one that you're folding and labeling says this in the inside. So for polynomial long division, essentially you're going to be long dividing numbers, but they're going to have x's in them. Uh, basically you're going to be used to write an improper polynomial as a sum of a polynomial with a remainder. Basically it's going to help us to be able to divide out factors completely. So if you can divide 56 by 7 longhand, you can also divide x squared plus 4x minus 32 by x plus 8. Let's try long division with numbers. So let's do a reminder of how do we divide here. So first thing we're going to do is 172 divided by 3. Well, that's a 3 on the outside divided by 172. So then you ask yourself, how what times 3 will give me 17? Because we can't go into 1, right? Well, that would be five. Five would go in, right? So that would be fifteen, because we went five times three and gave us fifteen. Subtracted that, got two. Then we dropped down the two, and then we would tw how many times? What times three would give me twenty-two, which in this case would be seven. 7 times 3, that's 21, subtracted, we got a 1. Now this was what was known as your remainder, right? Remember that? Um, right when you started dividing, you would put an R and then 1, but after you learned how to deal with it, you would go put your remainder over what you divided by. So my answer would be 57 and 1 third in particular. Now let's look at this with polynomials. So, a couple of questions we're going to ask ourselves here. First of all, we're going to have to set it up with the division. So, inside is 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. Outside is x plus 5. Oop, I don't have a whole lot of writing room. Let me do some erasing here, guys. Hold on. myself some writing room at the top there. Divided by x plus 5. Now, what you're going to ask yourself is, what times x did we multiply to get 2x squared? That's what we get, that's what we're putting right here for number 1. So that would be 2x, right? 2x times x would give me 2x squared. So what we're then going to do is multiply this 2x by both of our terms. We're basically going to multiply by the distributive property. So 2x times x, that's 2x squared. 2x times 5, that's a positive 10x. Line them up, but then we're going to have to subtract. So basically you're going to change the sign. So whatever was positive becomes negative and that kind of stuff. Because remember guys, you always subtract it to when you're taking it away. So then we're going to check. 2x squared minus 2x squared, well that's just gone, right? Negative 3x minus 10x, that's negative 13x. Now we got to drop the 1. And we start the process again. So something times x gives us negative 13x. That would be negative 13, right? So then negative 13 times x is negative 13x. Basically going to distribute here. Negative 13 times 5 is 65, negative 65. Just change our signs so we can subtract. We want these to cancel out ultimately. That's why we're having to change it. Those cancel off. I'm left with 66. So 66 is our remainder. So to finish our answer, this is our answer here, 2x minus 13, but I'm going to add on our remainder over what we divided by. That would be our answer in particular. 
Let's try another one here. So 2x squared plus 5x plus 3, and we're going to divide by 2x minus 1. So we're going to put 2x squared plus 5x plus 3, and we're going to divide by 2x minus 1. So something times 2x needs to give me 2x squared. So what times 2x would give me 2x squared? x, right? So let's put an x there. So this would be 2x squared and then minus x, right? Because x times negative 1 would give me negative x. Change our signs. Cancels off. We're left with 6x. Drop the 3. So now, something times 2x needs to give me 6x. Um, that'd be 3, right? Plus 3, a positive 3. So let's distribute the 3 in. So 3 times 2x, that'll give me 6x. 3 times negative 1, that is a negative 3. Change our signs. So you can subtract, so these guys cancel off. And then it looks like my remainder is 6. So my final answer, x plus 3 plus 6 over 2x minus 1. For my final answer when I'm dividing. Now, sometimes you're going to be missing terms on either of the sides, on the outside or the inside, in the divisor or the dividend. What you're going to want to make sure is put a zero as a placeholder. So if I notice here, notice how they were missing the x squared term. It's kind of gone. So we're going to have to put a zero in the front of it. So let's go ahead and write out our problem here. Notice how I'm putting a zero x squared for that placeholder there. We're going to divide by x squared plus 3x minus 5. Whew. Big, big, big. So, starting my long division here, something times x squared gives me x to the fourth. x squared, I think. So x squared times x squared, that's x to the fourth. We've got to make sure we multiply fully, though. x squared times 3x, that would be 3x cubed. The board's going a little funky today x squared times negative 5 would be negative 5x squared. Okay, change your signs, so that's going to be minus, it's going to be a minus, it's going to be a plus. x squared, x to the fourths are canceled. Uh, 4x cubed minus 3x cubed, that is an 1x cubed. Uh, 0x squared plus 5x squared, that is a 5x squared. Now we need to drop x. There we go. Um, Restart the process. Something times x squared gives me 1x cubed. An x? That would do it, right? So let's multiply. x times x squared, that is 1x cubed. x times 3x, that's 3x squared. And x times negative 5 is a negative 5x. So let's change our signs. This was positive, so now it's going to be a negative. This is a positive now. Cancels, 5x squared minus 3x squared, that is 2x squared, plus 6x. Whew. Drop the negative 1 now. Almost done, I swear. So something times x squared will give me 2x squared. Um, that'll be a positive 2, I think. So let's multiply. 2x squared, 6x negative 10. Change my signs. Cancels. 6x minus 6x. That's cancelled. I'm left with 9 as are my remainder. So my final answer to this problem, x squared plus x plus 2 plus 9 over what I divided by. Nice, long, really, really Holy buckets of monkeys, long problem. Example four, I want you guys to try on your own. You should get, look at the little bubble here, you should get a remainder of zero after you're fun, done dividing. So be careful, make sure you get that. Um, we will look over that problem in class as well. But now, 
go on to your next booklet. You're going to want to label it as synthetic division. Um, synthetic is another way to do long division. It's actually quicker. Um, however, synthetic only works when you're dividing by a linear expression such as x plus 3 or x minus 1. So it's not as useful as long division. However, it goes 10 times faster than long division. So, synthetic takes a little bit of setup. Um, synthetic looks a little funky, I'm going to be honest. What you're first going to do is you're first going to figure out what would make your whatever you're dividing by equal to 0. AKA, I know that x would be 5, right? So 5 is a solution to the problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an upside down box, upside down house if you want to consider it that, kind of like what you have done for long division. And we're going to put this 5 on the outside of the box. Then what we're going to do on the inside here is we're going to fill out the coefficients of the problem we're dividing by. So aka the numbers in the front. So I notice x cubed's the beginning, so I'm going to put a little notes on the top here that I'm going to have an x cubed column, an x squared column, an x column, and a no x column. So now let's fill out the numbers. So we got a 1 here, a negative 2 there, negative 8 is with the x column, negative 35 is with this column. So now we've gotten the setup. Now what we need to do is use synthetic division. This is where it gets a little messy. So the first step to synthetic is you're going to drop the 1. Always got to just drop it. No matter, no matter what number that is, you're always just going to drop it down. Now, to get this next number right here, what you're going to do is you're going to take this number and you're going to multiply by the 5. So I'm going to go 1 times 5. I'm going to get a 5 right here. Big giant 5 right here. There we go. Then you're going to add these together. So negative 2 plus 5, that's 3. Same thing. Go up and multiply. So 3 times 5, that's 15. We're going to add here. So negative 8 plus 15, that's 7. Go up, multiply, that's 35, add, that's 0. I like to put smiley faces on the zeros. Trust me, in a, little, in a couple of days, you're going to definitely be putting smiley faces because you're going to be excited too. Now, this, you're like, oh, that's cool. How, what did that do for me? Well, what this did is it divided by an x. So ultimately, you started with an x cubed problem. Since I divided out a solution or divided out an x value, you actually have dropped the power down to an x squared. So this new, this 1370 business, this is actually a new polynomial in secret code. But it's not an x cubed anymore because we took out an x. So technically, you now have an x squared column an x column, a no x column, and the remainder column. So my final answer for my division would be 1x squared plus 3x plus 7 for my answer. So if I divide this polynomial by x minus 5, I would get this for my answer as well. Same thing if you would long divide, you would get the same answer as well. Synthetic just allows you to break it down faster and it's not as not as time consuming as well. Let's try another problem here. So I got x squared plus 3x plus 5. So first step we did is we want to figure out what would this solve for if I set it equal to 0 or what's the solution to this problem. So x would be negative 1, right? So we're going to put that outside the upside down house and since x squared is the first term of our problem here, I'm going to put an x squared column. That's my first column. I'm going to have an x column, a no x column. So I'm going to put our numbers. 
1x squared, 3x's and 5 no x's. Drop the 1. To get my next number here, I'm going to go 1 times negative 1, so negative 1. Add these two, 3 plus a negative 1, which is 2. Multiply, add, and I have finished. Now notice guys, since we divided out an x, I'm no longer at x squared territory with this first part. I'm actually at the x territory. So I took away an x value because I divided out at one, one of the x values. So I have an x, a no x, and this is my remainder. So just like you just finished with long division, we're going to get 1x plus 2, and since we have this remainder, we're going to take care of it the same way you did with your long division problems. So I put my remainder over what you divided by right there. All right, let's try another one here. So first thing, x would be 3 to make this 0, right? So I know 3 is going to be on the outside because my solution would be 3. Um, my highest term is an x to the 4th, so I'm going to have to have an x to the 4th column an x cubed column, x squared column, an x, and a no x column. So let's put our numbers that correspond to each of these particular powers. So I have 1x to the fourth. Oh no, I'm missing an x cubed in my problem, aren't I? So just like long division, you need that placeholder of a zero. They kind of go back and forth with one another. Um, negative 10 is with x squared. 2 is for x, and 3 is no x. So same thing, drop the 1, multiply to give me 3, add here, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Smiley face, got a 0, yes, no remainder. A lot easier, right? So then what I got is an x cubed column here, x squared column, an x, and a no x column. So my final answer, 1x cubed my, uh, plus 3x squared minus x minus 1 for my final answer after I divide. So this polynomial divided by x minus 3 will give me that for a particular answer. The last example here, I'm going to have you do it on your own. We are going to do, we'll check it over in class to make sure you know what you're doing, so that way you have an extra time to ask a couple of questions as well from the video. But until then, that's the end of this video. I'll see you later, Sabers.